All right, so I said that the 800 meters was a really, you know, it's right at that tipping point between when having that extra muscle mass is beneficial versus detrimental. And so what we can see here is this is um, by an author Harper here. And what she did is she's actually one of these, one of the athletes here. And this is in long distance runners. So this is distance runners who are transitioning from male to female. And what they're showing you here is their average age grade for when they were a male runner, and their average age grade when they were a female runner after they had transitioned and decreased testosterone for greater than a year. And Harper is interested in this is because she is making this transition or has made this transition from male to female. And so she wanted to make sure that she wasn't getting an advantage. So what you can see is that if the age grades are the same, basically what that means is that age grading relative to the, to the gender or to the biological sex here. So this is their age grade relative to the other males in their age group, age grade relative to the other females in their age group. And what you can see is there's not really a, st a significant difference. If this individual is 69, that's their age grade as a man, they transition into being a woman, now their age grade is 70.8, it goes up a, a one. Um, this individual maybe isn't as, as good about taking care of their testosterone because they got better here in as a female than they relative to where they were as a male. But what you can see is most of them actually get a little bit worse or stay almost exactly the same. If you take the average, it's exactly the same. So again, what this means is when you take away the, the testosterone and you use testosterone low in drugs, there's no actual advantage for a male transitioning into female as far as athletic performance in distance running. Again, distance running, we talked about Camille Heron, who is this incredible athlete who is better than all the men anyways. So, you know, again, at distance running, the more you have to carry, the greater the cost of transport, the harder it's going to be for you. So there is really a sweet spot. And it seems like the 800 meters is the sweet spot where having maybe a little bit more testosterone is going to be even more beneficial. But when you get out to the distances, 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon and beyond, now that extra muscle mass is actually a hindrance. All right, so what I told you here is that in the 1920s, women's sports were targeted as a way to offset gains that were being made in the rest of society. So you start, you get the right to vote. Oh, I'll show you, you might be able to vote, but now you're not gonna be able to play sport. Those are the types of things that were happening. In, in 1972, Title IX passed and this provided legislation that meant federally funded schools had to give the same opportunities to women as they did to men. And that for, for the United States meant that that meant that there were all of these athletic opportunities that were suddenly being, being generated for women in, in the NCAA sports realm. I told you that biological sex is largely determined by your chromosomes and the gonads resulting from that. And that's determined by this protein SRY and the SRY gene determines your male identity because it turns on your male sex, uh, your male sexual genitalia and it turns off the female. Whereas gender is a sociological construct of what we think of as male and what we think of as female. So, you know, when my daughter was born, she got all kinds of pink clothes coming in the mail from all of our well-meaning um, uh, relatives. Uh, my daughter hated pink from the second that she was born. We went to green because it was a neutral color and she was much happier there. All right, I told you about congenital adrenal hyperplasia and 5-alpha reductase deficiency. And these are two things that can produce women with high testosterone levels. And that could, in a certain situation, provide them with a, a performance benefit as far as, as far as in certain sports. I showed you that testosterone improves performance by increasing muscle mass where that can be beneficial, but it can also be detrimental in certain situations. It also increases bone density, which is also beneficial. We think of all the time as being beneficial. But if you're a cyclist, for example, you don't necessarily want big bones because that's going to decrease your power to weight ratio. So again, these things have a bit of a trade off. The one thing that doesn't trade off is that now you have a much better oxygen carrying capacity, and that's going to allow you to do endurance sports better. But if you're an endurance runner, you're going to offset once you bring testosterone back down to, to biological female levels. Now what's going to happen is that you're going to lose the improved oxygen carrying capacity. And if anything, this extra muscle mass that you developed during puberty is going to make it harder for you. So that within one year of hormone therapy, what you see is that biological um, transition individuals who go from male to female actually 
that doesn't Im doesn't mean that they can perform that they are performing better relative to other women in their sport. All right, so really what this is showing us is that is that there is no weaker sex in the sense that weaker as far as performance in sport. It's just that women's bodies and women's uh, women's genetics are better tuned to certain sports than to, to than to other sports, at least at the Olympic level. And then when we talk about game play, we talk about basketball, football, we talk about um, soccer, field hockey, all of these other sports, volleyball, there is absolutely nothing that is going to mean that women's sport is less interesting, exciting, thrilling, all of these different things than men's sport. Really what it's all about is it's all about the social construct that comes and it's all about this idea of what we think a, a woman is supposed to do and what opportunities women and men have at, 